Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Do you guys remember a fabulous documentary called Eating You Alive? Well, I have one of the co-producers on today, and she is producing a brand new documentary called Disease Reversal Hope, where people with chronic diseases have reversed them, and she's going to tell us all about her new venture, and we're going to catch up with her. Please welcome to the show, Marilee Jacobs. It's really nice to connect with you again. Oh, always wonderful to connect with you, AJ. We always have such a great time when we're together. <laughs> wow. So, you know, eating you alive, that, I mean, it's still doing well. You, people are still watching it. People are still talking about it. Wow. Absolutely. So uh, you know, and it's actually kind of amazing because people are discovering it all the time for the first time. Uh, we noticed that on social media and such. And so it's really great to actually get emails from people who email in through the website um, asking questions about, you know, what about this, or is this a good food product, or how do I get started still? So, you know, as much as there is information and media and documentaries out there on the topic, it's obvious that there are there's still so much more to be done. So we're really glad that Eating You Alive has impacted so many, and we hope it continues to impact lives. So I'm trying to remember because I did go to the premiere in Los Angeles at the Theater on Sunset and Dr. Columbus Batiste was there. It was wonderful. What year was that? That was uh, 2017. Wow. Five, five, um, oh, five years ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. And the and great thing about was 2018, it actually, uh, it actually came out in over 600 theaters um, nationwide. And that was kind of, so what we did was sort of the pre-launch and then in 2018, in April of 2018, that, that was the really big launch. That was, I think, one of the largest uh, theatrical releases of a documentary up to that point, so. Wow, how are people connecting with you now? How are they finding it now? What, can they still watch it and if so on what platform? Yeah, well, Eating You Alive is a been avail it's available on multiple of uh, streaming and, and VOD channels, but just recently it went uh, and is available to view for free on YouTube. So if you just go to YouTube and look up Eating You Alive, it's uh, hosted there through Gravitas Ventures, who's the distributor for the film, and uh, people can watch it there for free. So. so tell us about the new one. When does it come out? Are you in the process of filming it? Is it completed? No, no, it's completed, and uh, you'll be able to find, you can follow on Disease Reversal Hope uh, social media channels, um, because it's it's out there, it's up on iTunes right now for pre-order, the distributor put it up there on iTunes, um, but it'll be on, on uh, Amazon and on a host of other streaming and um, video on demand platforms come August 30 is the official launch of it, and it will also be in some uh, theaters where... Still determining what theaters it's going to show up in, but it's supposed to be coming out in some theaters as well. So that would be amazing to actually see it in the theater on the big screen. I know it's fun. It's so much fun. Just the experience of it is great. How long did it take you to do this one? And and who are the who are the stars? Who are the who are the people that <laughs> who are the stars? Well, um, you're going to see some familiar faces in this one, so you can kind of catch up and see how they've been maintaining. Um, people like Mark Ramirez and Jimmy Con Dr. Jimmy Conway and uh, Brooke Goldner, Dr. Brooke Goldner, of course, um, and Dr. Scott Stoll. Uh, and these people, you know, well, Dr. Stoll, obviously, he's amazing and, and the expert as far as, you know, all things whole food plant based from a medical uh, standpoint and healing standpoint. Um, but with people like Mark and uh, Brooke actually speak to another story that's in the film that's really cool that she had a, a part in um, bringing that about. Uh, but with regards to Mark and Jimmy, uh, we have some uh, a little bit of a twist on their story because now we've incorporated some spouses and some significant people in their lives that were also part of that journey. And so they can bring a perspective that hasn't been heard before. That is amazing. I imagine people are, are thrilled to participate. I, I imagine when you ask them, they, they most always say yes, don't they? Yes. You know, I, I don't think I can ever recall anyone saying, no, I don't want to be a part of that. Because as you know, when you've experienced something wonderful and amazing, you it's just natural that you want to share that so other people can benefit from that experience. That experience. Excuse me. <coughs> So which diseases are being shown that can be reversed in this documentary? 
So, you know, all of the uh, subjects that you might that you might anticipate being cardiovascular disease and uh, uh, type 2 diabetes and lupus, you know, as we hit and eating you alive with Dr. Goldner's story, uh, but several other autoimmune diseases are present in this one. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, Dr. Monica Agarwal talks about that. Uh, Marcy Madrid discusses multiple sclerosis and what it was like to be diagnosed with that, to come out on the other side of that. Um, so some, some new diseases that we haven't discussed before. That's great. So is there any coincidence that this has the same title as a book by Dr. Scott <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no coincidence at all. <laughs> so um, Dr. Dr. Stoll and Dan Purgis of the Purgis Foundation is extremely passionate about this subject matter because it's impacted his own life. Um, they wanted to co-write a book of inspirational stories because they recognize like the rest of us that it doesn't really have anything much to do with research or what studies have been put out there. People could really care less about that. Those are they're great information, but as far as inspiring someone to make a change, we all know it's the personal stories. And so knowing this, they wanted to put together a book of inspiring stories that would help inspire others to make that change. So we just took a few select stories out of that book because I think there's like 33 stories or so, 33, 36, somewhere around there in the book itself. And of course, we couldn't cover that many stories in a documentary. It's only 90 minutes long. So uh, we chose a few select stories that would give representation of some diseases to bring to life on the screen. Nice. How did you get interested in documentary filmmaking in the first place? <laughs> that was a total, uh, total sidebar, I think, really, to my life, a tangent I didn't expect my life to take. Um, by training and education, I was a healthcare administrator. And uh, after doing that for about 10 years, um, we started a family and uh, I decided to remove myself from that industry so I could be a great mom and be at home more. And I've always had a, I don't know, a desire to, to be really involved in a lot of different things. And, and so I kind of launched an entrepreneurial venture into the food industry. So I was in the process of that when a mutual friend introduced me to Paul. Um, Paul had been in video production for 40 plus years at the time and uh, he had worked with his father and then he launched his own video production company after his father had retired and so I had launched this food venture and a mutual friend put us together for mutual benefit. I needed you know video assets and things for my food venture and and he needed some marketing assets or some demo reel of uh, demo reel um, content, goodness, demo reel content for his new company. So uh, we got together and we filmed a commercial for my food venture and that's what introduced us. And in talking about our different interests and things, he saw some value, I guess, in whatever talents and gifts that I could bring to the company. And so we started working together and it was just really interesting that my background in healthcare and food brought us to this place where we could bring some perspectives uh, to the production part of Eating You Alive. And of course, our whole team took the challenge and the uh, Eating You Alive was kind of the result of the experience that we had transforming our own health. And that's how that came to be. Well, that was my next question, transforming your own health. When did you first hear about a vegan or a plant-based diet and when did you adopt one? You know, it's kind of crazy. I, I grew up with bouts of vegetarianism, um, but as my mom would have referred to me as a child, I was her little carniv. So I was, uh, I was a carnivore and uh, loved meat. My sister not so much, but I, but I did and loved to dairy like crazy. But it really wasn't until my mom's mother uh, passed away with colon cancer that my mom started looking for some answers. Uh, and ways to prevent that happening in, in our lives. And so she went to some seminars. I heard a bunch of physicians speak, and there was one physician specifically that was really talking, you know, no meat, no meat, no meat. So she came home from that seminar, and there was no meat in the house after that. Um, but we would eat it when we went out, my father and myself mostly. And uh, then over the years, you know, 
I didn't eat so much meat when I started having my children because I wanted them to be more healthy, but I ate a ton of dairy. Uh, and it really wasn't until Paul and I were working together and we started talking to a physician, uh, Dr. Mike Colley, about uh, what he was doing in the community as far as doing lectures on whole food plant-based uh, lifestyle that uh, we became introduced to a whole food plant-based lifestyle and what was all involved in that. And it was through that that Paul said, you know, uh, I've got some health issues of my own. I really like to try this. I don't think it works, but uh, would you help me? Because I'd grown up catering and cooking and loving all things like that. And so I said, yeah, let's, let's see what we can do about this and present it to the rest of the team. And the rest of the team said, hey, why don't we all just try this together? So our whole production team uh, at that time, we launched into this, you know, using ourselves as lab rats to see if there was really anything to this whole food plant-based health transformation track. And, you know, lo and behold, in two weeks, there were massive differences in the way all of us felt and massive reverses in things like acid reflux and tendonitis and just some of those things. And in six weeks period of time, Paul himself lost 45 pounds and dropped to his high school weight and felt great. And his pictures online, you can find his before and afters. They're amazing. They look like a totally different person. Yeah, absolutely. How many years ago was that now that you've been plant-based? You know, that was 2014. It was February of 2014. And uh, it was literally a night to day change. You know, like one day we were talking uh, with Dr. Holly and he said, go watch Forks Over Knives. So we went back that day, watched Forks Over Knives and they had served as a plant-based meal over our discussion. And um, that next morning we went in and talked to the crew and, and that was our first whole food plant-based day. And it's been that way ever since. Wow, that's a, so, so you were already that, uh, eating that way when you did the documentary. Oh yes, the documentary was definitely a result of our own experience, having gone through it, been through the challenges, you know, all of it. And I will tell you that in the early days of the production, when we were first putting together the content for the trailer, um, it was difficult to eat this way on the road. Uh, really difficult uh, from the perspective of there weren't so many options out there. So we would go, we would fly into a, a grocery store and we'd find some you know vegetables steam in a bag or brown rice steam in a bag. And then we would stop at the gas station or a truck stop that had the microwaves out there and we could throw it in there and eat it on our paper plates as we're going down the road. I mean, it was pretty primitive, but sustaining. So did you film any of that? Because that would be a great documentary. To <laughs> yeah. You know, it would have been, but no, we didn't. <laughs> we're actually not, believe it or not, we're actually not in front of the camera people so much. I'm probably out of our team. I'm the most in front of the camera, but that's only out of necessity, not not necessarily because that's, you know, what I'm longing to do, so. Oh my God, that's great. But that would be a great documentary, you know, eating vegan on the road because people say, you know, it's so difficult. I've traveled for 10 years. I didn't find it all that difficult and I've gone to several other countries, but I guess it depends. What it depends, eating. yeah. And I think now it's become much easier. Of course, after you live this way, you find that everything's easier about it. You know, cooking this way is easier. You just get used to it. It becomes a pattern. So it's, and it becomes easier, I think, to find things and figure out how to ask for things at restaurants that kind of fit what, you, what your eating style is and that type of thing. You know, we've talked about doing a show, a TV show, a travel TV show on this particular topic. Uh, with one of our favorite doctors who actually you'll meet in uh, Disease Reversal Hope. Her name is Dr. Susanna Bazzoni, and she is amazing. She's a hoot. She's got great personality, and she's phenomenal on camera. Very informational and a lot of fun, too. So I don't know. We'll see where that goes. That's something that we would like to work on. That sounds wonderful. Well, one of the live viewers is saying that they love the Disease Reversal Hope book. So I guess we could say if you love the book, you'll love the movie. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's fun to see some of those characters that you read about come to life. There's somebody watching that asked a name named Apple if you dealt with any stories of chronic fatigue or or do you think that can be reversed too? Um, you know, I I believe that anybody's best best chance of reversing anything is 
by adopting a whole food plant-based diet. I think I've heard stories of people who've had chronic fatigue and this type of thing um, related to gut health and just the, the suppression I think your body goes through when you're eating all of the wrong things. And if certainly not to reverse it totally, at least dramatic improvements, you know, because there's so many factors, underlying factors to all of these things. And I'm not a medical doctor, so I can't speak to any of that. But I would say I, I truly believe that anybody's best chance of reversing whatever it is that they have or improving greatly whatever diseases or conditions that they're dealing with is absolutely going with a, a whole food plant-based diet. No oil. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm just curious if there were any detractors. To, I don't like to look at the negative criticism, but I'm curious if there were any naysayers to eating you alive. What was their, uh, what, you know, what what was their beef? <laughs> you know, it's funny that you should ask about that. Um, there was a there was a few things uh, with regards to the film. Of course, you know there's always haters on social media. Uh, it seems like there's people trolling all the time, and whatever is going to be inspiration and good out there, somebody's going to come along and, and want to write it off. So, you know, there's this um, there's always that going on. But uh, it was interesting that we had a few people want us to remove things like taking out everything about no oil because they said there was no science behind that. And, you know, my response to that is, I don't know about the science, there was no science behind cigarette smoking either. <laughs> you know, there weren't tons of studies, tons of studies done without you knowing that it was really, you know, detrimental to your health. Um, but, but personal experiences have shown that it wasn't until the removal of the added oils in a diet that people totally reversed their rheumatoid arthritis, for instance, and got off all their medications. Um, so we've heard these experiences over and over and over again. And I would say that rather than relying on, quote, science or some study, which seems that oftentimes these studies are very much uh, perverted <laughs> or controlled or manipulated in such a way as to uh, bring about a result uh, that the researchers were looking for and I, I'm sure I'm going to get some hate comments based on that but it, but it's true um, rather than looking at that I, I would much rather listen to somebody tell me about their own experience and let me apply that to my life and see if it works for me as well when it comes to this well, and they're uh, still arguing about the oil thing even in the plant-based world even doctors yeah, they are. yeah so that's why I kind of go back to personal experiences uh, we know several people who um, it wasn't until they dropped the oil that they lost the weight they wanted to lose, you know, those last however many pounds um, that they were able to get off all of their medications for rheumatoid arthritis or other things. And so that seemed to be the final piece that was uh, in the cards for them, you know, that seemed to work for them really well. And uh, honestly, even with our own team, um, when there have been times that we've been on the road or been out somewhere, whatever, out eating out at a restaurant and there was some oil included, uh, that happens more so on the road than, than when we're at home. But when we do that, the pounds come back on or we'll see maybe a little more inflammation in the joint, you know, inflammation in the joints. Uh, and those kinds of things start to occur that lets us know, yeah, the body's not so excited about that. Yeah. I want to read a comment from a live viewer named Laura. Reaching mainstream without media assistance is frustrating. I work with many people who are so inflamed but seem to have no interest in changing their diet. How do you broach the uninquiring minds? <laughs> that's, a, that's a really tough one. Um, you know, it's funny because I have it seems like I've run into people a lot just randomly, whether we're standing in line at the FedEx or in the grocery store line and, you know, somehow just I'll ask people how they're feeling and, and, and they'll be honest sometimes and say, oh, you know, I'm not feeling all that well. Uh, and I was like, oh, really? And, you know, kind of engage them in conversation. And in it, inevitably, there is some little point in the conversation that I can connect either my own personal story or a story of somebody that we've worked with or known of that said, you know, I had a friend of mine who had this particular thing and this is what they tried. And they said it brought about amazing results. And immediately that person's eyes are like, really? You know, how did that come about? And then, you know, send them a link to a documentary to watch. Um, 
doesn't always work, but uh, I would say a good portion of the time people are even more so now interested in watching something, watching a documentary that kind of opens their eyes and it's very a non-pressurized type of situation, you know. How long does it take you to make your documentaries? Uh, well, of course, it depends on the documentary. Uh, this particular one, we started actually in production um, last, I'm sorry, a year ago, June. It's like June the 3rd, we left town and headed out across the country to capture these stories. And we had everything tied up in April, I think it was. So usually about 9 to 11 months somewhere in there is what it takes to put together um, a documentary. Kind of like having a baby. Yeah, exactly. Huh? And we laugh about that a lot because when you have all of this content that you shot and then you're going through and trying to weave the story, I'm amazed at the editors, you know, as they're going through and taking bits and pieces to try and weave this cohesive story. Um, and, and you have to quote, it sounds a terrible term, but kill your babies, you know, from that perspective. It's like you have to take things out that you're really wed to. There may be a favorite story or a comment or something in, in, the, in all of the footage that we've captured that I'm really in love with and I think is so powerful and it's going to be so impactful, but it may not quite fit. And so, you know, that's got to go. And in in uh, light of the greater good, you know, for the story, the way it's told. So we have so much great information and oftentimes we have to leave so much of it on the cutting room floor. Well, you know, Marilee, the same thing happens with writing books. I remember my first book on process, it was like 500 pages. And, you know, that's why we used Dan Merzer as my co-author. He like whittled it down to about 150 because I can't <laughs> write like I talk. So I totally get that. I mean, and don't you sit there and go, oh, my goodness, I don't want to leave that out. I know. So you, you put it in another book or maybe you can yeah. put it in or the outtakes. So Beth yeah. would like to know that the person in the film with the rheumatoid arthritis, were, was their disease reversed or was it just improved? Um, that was Dr. Monica Agarwal. And, and I would say she she does not she does not say that it was reversed, um, but she said it is. She doesn't experience the symptoms of it. You know, if she's living right, if she's eating properly, there's there's no symptoms of anything. But she'll tell you, now, if I don't get the sleep I need or if I'm done, you know, then she can will experience some stiffness or, you know, those kinds of things. So I would say that that disease is non-existent as long as she's doing all the things that she should be doing. And then when she's not, then it raises its ugly head. But that kind of is the same situation for really any disease at this point. You know, um, if I'm not doing exactly what I should, then I am then I am vulnerable to all kinds of conditions and symptoms and things that I'd prefer not to have. Well, it's kind of like the same thing with addiction. I mean, people, you know, I don't know if you ever really overcome it, but you manage it by not ingesting the addictive substances. So exactly i would think sugar is like one of the biggest examples of that for sure oh my god yeah so merrily i remember hearing a story when forks over knives came out i think it was 2011 that the people that were working on the film like say the editors they actually went vegan just from watching the film do you have any stories of any crew members that changed their diet just from working on the film you know, I don't because all of the crew had already changed their diet and that's why we made the film. So I don't have anything like that. But I will tell you that there's been quite a number of people who switched their diet based on their working on the film, like uh, the people who were working on the scoring and the audio um, that, that did a lot of the sound mixing and engineering uh, for the film. They certainly uh, made some changes in their diet. Uh, an accountant, actually, that, that worked with us uh, for the documentary, he did. And he now he shares the film with, you know, clients and everybody um, because it changed his, his way of living, you know, and improved his health. So there have been people like that that have been associated with just all the crew had already made their changes. So that's great. So I see a lot of times when people do documentaries, they do like go, you know, these, pro uh, you know, like crowd crowdsourcing or GoFundMes or whatever they're called. Did you have to do that for any of your films? Um, you, no, we didn't have to do crowdfunding. We had some people that were very much passionate about the message with Eating You Alive that um, put funds in and partnered with us in that way um, because we put a lot of our own into that into that first one. Um, 
Plant Wise was a documentary that came out that actually we specifically partnered up with a uh, healthcare organization, hospital organization. Uh, it was to be an internal project, but you can find it uh, out in the public domain actually to watch um, because I think they were so excited and realized the impact that it was having, so they wanted to make that available to everyone. Um, and that was one that they funded. Um, that was a project for them, and, and we they funded it partially, and then we we funded it as well through eatingyoualive.org as a nonprofit. And then with Disease Reversal Hope, um, that was a passion project by the Purchase Foundation. Dan Purchase being uh, the co-author of the book Disease Reversal Hope with uh, Dr. Scott Stoll, and the Purchase Foundation is an nonprofit organization that is very much um, passionate about funding projects uh, in this space because he is a firm believer in the power of whole food plant-based lifestyles um, to prevent, treat, and reverse disease. And so he wants to get the message out there in any way they can. And uh, we've been talking about a, a second, um, a second documentary to follow up disease reversal hope, kind of in the disease reversal hope family. And uh, so we're looking forward to that. I've talked to you before a little bit about that because we really want you to be in that one. Nice. Well, I, I, I welcome that. Yeah, so Disease Reversal Hope, it's a book, it's going to be a film, and it's also a nonprofit. So what, what, what kind of work do do the nonprofits that you just mentioned do? And can people get involved with them if they wanted? Uh, the Purchase Foundation is actually a, um, a private, non, private nonprofit, so it's privately funded that way. Um, the um, eatingyoualive.org is a public nonprofit, so anyone can go to the website and donate, and those funds specifically go to fund projects like the ones that we're working on to help educate the public and inspire and, you know, improve lives. You know, I, I noticed like a lot of times with documentaries, they'll have like Forks Over Knives, then they started doing cookbooks. Did you ever think to do like cookbooks based on your film? <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, we had we had visions of that, but uh, all of it requires a ton of time, and uh, we have recipes on our website and things that you know videos, cooking demo videos that we've shot. We've done some for disease reversal hope as well, just to give people an idea of how easy it is to fix dishes that help to heal you. But as far as a cookbook, that's like that's not exactly our wheelhouse, and I think we'll probably stick to what we do best. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Okay. Because somebody was asking, is disease reversal hope a film or a book? It's a film. It's like when you play charades, you're going to have to go <laughs> yeah. because it's a film and a and book. book. I cannot wait to see it. I mean, I'm near the Sacramento area, and it's a big city. Do you think it's possible it'll be in a theater there? I, I don't know. I, I sure hope so. We're going to find out. We need to talk to the distributors and see what they have in mind. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about you and like, what, what do you eat? What do I eat? Uh, okay, well, I can be really uh, quite in the moment. <laughs> so for breakfast uh, this morning, actually, after I'd had my, you know, four bottles of water, um, I, had a, I had a baked potato. I love potatoes. I love Dr. McDougal. <laughs> it's like, that's, that's my potato king right there. But yeah, I had a baked potato, and I'm going to have a, a really big salad here probably in about an hour or so, so. Sounds like you eat like me. That's all I want. I love potatoes. It, it looks like you're traveling, like maybe you're in an RV. And what's great is, you, you, have you ever gone to Wendy's? They have the best baked potatoes. <laughs> no, but I used to eat the baked potatoes from Wendy's because I loved the sour cream, right? And all the sour cream and the butter and all that stuff to put on it. But no, we actually, uh, we do have a bus. And so this is our home away from home when the crew is on the road. And the beauty of it is we have a full kitchen with a full-size refrigerator in it. So I made my uh, baked potato right here in, in our bus. Nice. I love it. I love it. It would, must yep. be so, how big is your crew? It must be fun to work on these projects. It is. You know, it depends on the project, how large our crew is. But our core crew is about five, six, five to six people. Do you ever use any interns? Because I think, I mean, if I didn't have a, you know, a job, I, I thought it would be really fun to like intern doing one of these documentaries. You know, we have. Uh, we have some universities around and we've had some interns apply and, and we've taken some interns on the road on several projects. So, yes, we do have unpaid internships. Uh, you know, it's, it's a great, it's a great gig, honestly. You get 
exposed to life on the road, life in production, and real world kind of experiences when you're have been in school for such, you know, to get out on the road and to participate in something like this is a great opportunity and a great learning experience. Nice. How many of your friends and family personally changed their diet once you started getting into this line of work? Oh, wow. Okay. So let me see. Um, my Paul changed over his, I think it was his sister that was the first one to make a change. Uh, and she was, she's eight years older than he is. So she had uh, rheumatoid arthritis. So experienced some just, you know, tremendous changes in her life. Um, and then uh, all three of his kids did. Uh, and I, and then his mom and dad, actually, his father had had a heart attack and a stroke and, a, and uh, all within the same week, heart attack, triple bypass and a stroke all within the same week. Um, and his mom, when she started, she got a little scared. She had some carotid artery clogs, like over 50%. And so the, the, the doctor there was kind of concerned, you know, it's like she's primed for a stroke. So she called uh, Paul up and she's like, okay, what do I need to do? This is what's happening. So he told her and, and she, she got right on it. She was in her 80s, you know, she got right on it. And within three months, she'd reduced that plaque and all that blockage in her carotids down to below 20%, which is considered normal. So, so that was their family. And, and in my family, my mom and dad, my dad had had a heart attack. And so we kind of helped them switch their, um, switch their diet up. And so they're in their 80s as well now. And uh, my dad's cardiologist is just pleased as punch because he'd had a stent put in, but there are no blockages. He's totally clean inside and uh so the doctor says just keep doing what you're doing because it's whatever you're doing is doing the job and he always goes in there with a dvd or something you know to tell him hey watch this so uh he's a great advocate for the film for sure and uh you know we have other i think family members uh, kind of that have started to to go that way once they see some changes made but you know not everybody gets excited about it like that even within your own family um, and that can be a struggle and it can be frustrating because you see how much better their life could be, but ultimately it's, it's gotta be somebody's decision to do it. Otherwise it just doesn't work. Absolutely. Well, it sounds like you'd also, come, you have enough material for another documentary, which is your friends and family. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That would probably be true. <laughs> also, so we probably all end up on Dr. Phil, however, if that were the case. <laughs> Sharon says, how do baked potatoes work for diabetic people? I would encourage her to read Dr. John McDougall's book, The Starch Solution, or watch his talk specifically on potatoes on this channel, which I'm happy to link for you, Sharon, in just a moment. Absolutely. And yet I think when it came to potatoes, there was so much misunderstanding about it. And I think because of everything that usually gets associated with the baked potato, like the sour cream, the butter, the cheese, and all the fat that goes in the baked potato, that's kind of where we started seeing some real problems and people started demonizing the potato, but it wasn't really the potato. Yeah, I actually have three complete lectures from Dr. McDougall on this channel. One is called The Potato is Still a Staple Part 1, The Potato is Still a Staple Part 2, and Defending the Great Potato. So there's three hours of content right here at Sharon If you should just put the search box and you'll learn all about why potatoes are great. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a good thing I love them. I mean, it's a good thing they're that way because I love them. You know, I'm like the, the Bubba Gump of potatoes. Yeah. Oh, here's a wonderful question. Thank you so much, Kathy. Do you have any interest or thoughts about changing the awful food that is in the hospital and in the schools? <laughs> yes. Oh, do we ever have thoughts? You know, one of Paul's biggest frustrations, I think, is after making the transition to a whole food plant-based diet, he, he looks back at what they fed his father when his father, you know, came out of triple bypass surgery. And it was the white bread and, you know, just, I can't remember if there was a, like a beef patty or something. It was, or chicken. It, it was ridiculous, really. It was just all this, the same garbage that got him into the problem to begin with is what they were putting on his hospital train. Um, you know, there are some efforts being made and we've actually heard of a couple of different hospital systems in Florida um, they started putting whole food plant-based items on their menu so that there are some options there for that. 
And, and I think uh, you, you've probably seen this, AJ, you have more exposure to this, I think, than probably we do. But it seems like, you know, whole food plant-based eating, veganism certainly has become more widely accepted. But And there's that misunderstanding between veganism and whole food plant-based eating, which we still have to kind of address those issues. But I think overall, as whole food plant-based is becoming more accepted, and I think through these documentaries and books and, and your podcasts and podcasts of others talking about this, more and more physicians are also becoming educated through the American College of Lifestyle Medicine and the Plantrition Project. And so you're starting to see this growth and acceptance of the lifestyle itself. And, and I think through that, more and more hospitals are then kind of getting on board with that because they're seeing a reduction in type 2 diabetes or other metabolic conditions and things through diet. So finally, we're kind of seeing the shift, I think, after these so many years. Yeah, I, I'm, I've told this story on the show before, but I can't forget about it, even though it was 20 years ago. And when I was working at a retirement uh, home, I was the activity director and one of my colleagues was admitted to the emergency room of the local hospital. And I went to visit him in the emergency room while he was waiting for his test results. And they fed him, it was beef stew, apple pie, whole milk, piece of bread, white bread with butter. And yet they said, well, we're waiting to see if you're diabetic or had a heart attack. And I'm like, that's what they give him? Yeah, and it's crazy. It really is crazy, but it, you know, and the other thing is, even with all of these diseases and these sufferings, I think what one of the most frustrating things is people get to is like, oh, okay, I, you know, I'm getting older. I don't really have a whole lot that I enjoy in my life. Let me have what I want to eat, you know, and not realizing that it, you can still enjoy your food a lot, and but can you imagine? having more years and more, not just more years of living in misery, but more years of living with vitality and energy to be able to do more and, and experience more. And so it's kind of this sad, sad state of mind that we see people come to where they're like, this is really the only enjoyment I have. Just let me eat what I want, you know. Have you heard of George Hayek, who was on my show, who has a hospital in the Middle East that only serves vegan food? No, I haven't. That's amazing. Well, it's wonderful. Well, I think maybe you need to go to Lebanon and do a documentary <laughs> on him or watch watch the piece because it's, so only, it's, a vegan, yeah. it's the world's only vegan hospital as far as I know. Oh, that would be amazing. Yes. And, and who who doesn't want to travel? I mean, we love to travel. So, yeah. where, But when you're not traveling, where, where do you call home base? Home base is Chattanooga, Tennessee. So the South, the, the Bacon Belt, kind of. It is the South. And you know, actually, it wasn't that long ago that Chattanooga was listed as one of the five fattest cities in the U.S. Crazy. Wow. That is Chattanooga. crazy. I would have never imagined that, but but apparently so. So there's act, um, very intense efforts to change that. And Dr. Susanna Bazzoni is one of those people working extra hard to do that. Um, there's some blue zone activity there now. They've launched efforts to make Chattanooga a blue zone. And she's really putting out all efforts to get into the hospitals and the local restaurants to try to come together as a community and just make more healthy options available. Well, well, here's a question from a live viewer. Since you live in the South, you might be able to answer. What's a good way to season turnips, collard, and kale? Well, you're probably the expert at that since you are the chef, AJ. <laughs> well, I, just, I, I, just, I just suggested California balsamic vinegar, which, by the way, we have the owner on the show at 2 o'clock doing a demo, but you get two free bottles just for being on the show, so you can start seasoning with them. I always say onion and garlic. Onion and garlic fixes everything. Onion and garlic, and you know, actually, I like a little, a little apple cider vinegar. Sometimes I like in mine as well, and smoked paprika. Oh, smoked paprika is one of my favorites. <laughs> that works really well. So, I, you know, I, I don't know if this is too soon to ask this question, but even when I'm writing a book, I'm always like two or three books ahead. What, yeah. what else is on the horizon for you? Well, you know, I think we talked to you before um, and talking with uh, Dan Purgis at the Purgis Foundation. We had been talking for a while now about following up disease reversal hope with maybe uh, an obesity reversal hope. Um, you know, I think there's, as you well know, there's so much sensitivity around this idea of body image and weight 
and, and I think somehow we've convoluted the idea that um, that that they can be separated somehow. Um, but at the very basis of this is is health, is a concern for health, and how weight is actually just a symptom of ill health uh, in so many ways. And so um, that is one. Uh, I think topic that we really need to tackle and kind of tackle some of those specific issues that are addressed where you're talking about health and body image and, and all those types of things, uh, self-esteem, you know, all those things that come with it. But it would seem to me like the nation and the world knows that there's an issue because weight, the weight loss industry, weight loss books, weight loss pills, are still booming and garnering billions of dollars every year. So whether people want to talk about it or not, it's obviously still an issue very much in the forefront of their minds. Right. Well, whether it's obesity or heart disease or any of the diseases you mentioned, if, if, if you don't stay compliant doing what you did to reverse it, of course it's going to come back. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a matter of habits. And, and that's really, and that's the hardest thing to change is, is your habits. <laughs> yeah. I think sometimes the hardest thing to change is your mind. <laughs> well, that, you're right. <laughs> Absolutely. I'd agree with you. So I was listening to an interview you did many years ago with Dr. Lori Marbus, and you talked about meeting James Cameron. You want to tell us about that? Was that, because I would be very intimidated. He's like, he's a, you know, he's a big wig. Well, yes, he is. And we were very blessed uh, to have those opportunities, but he, he and uh, Susie in their home in uh, Malibu. Um, it, it was very intimidating. Paul would tell you, you know, as a director, he, he's like, I'm nobody. You know, you should go to go and, and film the, the, the director. Um, it was, was quite an experience. But, you know, they were so hospitable and so generous with their time and so nice. And, and, and he offered to help carry in our gear, you know. It's, uh, they were just really, really wonderful. And we were so privileged and honored to be able to meet them and interview them and, and have them partner with us for this project. That's amazing. Wow, that, that must yeah. have been really exciting. It really was. You know, and in the same day as we met Sam, uh, Samuel L. Jackson, and, and he was just an absolute delight as well. We had such a great time with him. But isn't it true that he didn't stay vegan? He did not. Uh, you know, that was, the, that was the saddest part of the story, but we thought that it was important to tell um, because his testimony was, you know, after working with Dr. Eselson, he reversed all the things that were bothering him that were a concern, a major concern for him, but he chose his career being asked to make that change uh, for a particular part, a role in a movie he was doing at the time, and he was told to put on weight and he better put it on fast. And so he chose his career at that moment, but he said, you know, I know how to do it. I know how to go back. But he did testify that as soon as he went back to his old pattern of being, all of those concerns and problems that he had gone to see the doctor for all came rushing back. So, you know, we say, we tell that story, we thought it's important to share so that people do realize it is something that you have to make a commitment to in order to maintain those healthy habits and that healthy lifestyle. Um, but that some people do not, and that when you don't, you have to expect that you'll reap the consequences of those. Our our hope and our prayer is that he says, you know, he knew how to do it and how to get back there and how to do that but when he wanted to make that change. And so he knows how to do it. So hopefully he'll make that commitment again. Yeah, I hope he will. And I'd I hope we, you find out about it. But like, has he seen game changers like he could have put on weight without animal products? Yeah, we had that conversation actually, and that had come out after this role in this movie. And so he had he had indicated that he would like to get back, you know, to that. But but who knows? <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Well, he's still a great actor. Laura says, "Do you ever use volunteers who wish to learn filmmaking?" You know, we we have we call those unpaid internships. <laughs> So, um, you know, it's it's probably not beyond the realm of possibility that if we're on location shooting somewhere and someone happens to be in that area, uh, that they could probably hang out with us for a day or something. Um, but, you know, it's it's always something we consider. Sometimes you find your very best people via that route. Yeah. How, how would they get in touch with you? To, through the nonprofit or... Oh, they can, reach out, they can reach out, yeah, through info at eatingyoualive.org. 
or they can uh, reach out through info at smallboxentertainment.com. You know, when I read that, I didn't have my glasses on. I thought it said smallpox entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> that has been a mistake made once or twice. Yeah, <laughs> but I know. it's like a box, yes. Small box. How, what, what, where did you get think of that name from? Well, that's not me at all. That was all Paul. You know, he had um, founded the company before we met, and his thought behind using the name small or coming up with the name small box was because he envisioned that we were going because this is you know quite a number of years ago that people were going to be wanting to watch content on their small boxes phones ipads all those kinds of things and that we needed to produce content high quality content that you were used to seeing on the big screen but for a small box I love it. Same. Who came up with the title for Eating You Alive? And were there other titles that were being considered? <laughs> yes, as a matter of fact, um, whenever we're titling a project, now in the case of Disease Reversal Hope, we did not go through this process because the Purchase Foundation and Dr. Stoll had kind of already had gone through a process and determined what the, what the title was going to be. But for Eating You Alive and for most of our other projects that we do, we usually brainstorm and we get this whole document out and everybody throws in their ideas no matter how crazy it sounds they all go they'll all go in a document and then we start working our way through and crossing off the ones comparing the ones we like to the ones we don't like so much until we whittle it down and um, that's what we did with eating you alive and uh, we finally landed on eating you alive because there was a double entendre there you can either eat yourself to life or the foods that you're eating can literally be eating you alive and so it was kind of interesting as we were in production, we would ask people what they thought about the title and how they took it. And we had, you know, it was about 50-50. Some people took it to the positive or people took it to the negative. So it was really interesting to get people's perspectives on that. I love it. Do you have a, a working title for the next project? Uh, well, the next project would be a follow-on to the Disease Reversal Hope series. So at this point in time, I think... You know, they're toying with uh, some word for fat, obesity, somewhere, weight, uh, but it'll be a reversal hope follow-on. Nice. Oh, well, I guess it's endless. You could almost do one documentary on every single disease. I think that may be what the uh, vision is. Well, you've got a lot of sick people in the world, so I think you're, I think you're always going to have a job. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, you know, who's watching is our, our friend Paul Chatlin, and he's an example of disease reversal hope. He is absolutely. Hey, Paul, good to hear from you. <laughs> Glad you're on. Yeah, Paul has a great story in Eating You Alive. We, we talked with him about his reversal of his cardiovascular disease. So, yeah, he's got a great story. Yeah. Why do you think, though, with all this evidence, that people just seem so, still unwilling to change? They'd rather have a pill, a potion, or a procedure many times. I think it's the instant gratification thing, you know, and that um, I, I, my personal opinion is that food is by far more personal to people than even politics or religion. You know, they always say never discuss politics or religion with anybody. I think you can discuss those every day and twice on Sunday before you ever start discussing what somebody puts in their mouth. That becomes very intimate and very personal. That's an internal thing. And, you know, those are such, they're, they're tied to emotions and traditions and, and all of these, things. and they're used as um, medication. You know, we use those to comfort um, and to deal with stress. And so I think for that reason, and it's scary because that's a, that's a, it's a, it's a social thing and it's something that we enjoy. You know, it, it's a, all the senses are involved in food. And it's a scary thing to think about giving up something that you're so tied to emotionally. And I think that's probably why it's so difficult. I think they're tied to it also because for, for, for many people, it's addictive. That's exactly right, too. Yeah, I believe the way that foods are, are produced yeah. it very much becomes that way. Uh, Esther says it's nice to get to get acquainted with Mary Lee. She actually was one of the subjects in Disease Reversal Hope, Esther Loveridge. Yes, yeah, she and Ben, her husband, we read their story. And we think that's so absolutely awesome. And they're such an inspiration. I know. And, and what, what a nice thing also about her story isn't just that she did it because other people have done it, but she did it later in life. Yeah, exactly. I think that just goes to show you you're never too old, you know, um, to live a really vibrant, 
energy filled life. I agree. I agree. All right. Do you ever have any funny outtakes that don't show up in the film where people just do silly or goofy things? Um, I'm trying to think about that. Uh, now, I, I mean, there could always be outtakes. Usually it's because somebody's flubbed a word or, you know, they started saying something and, and they got their words all jumbled up. But um, no, I don't know that we've filmed anything particularly funny or anybody making a funny comment per se. Uh, there's been a couple of those. You know, I always, we, we always get a kick out of Jimmy Conway. Uh, Dr. Conway is, is such a charming person, and so uh, we've had we've had a lot of fun with him. And in Disease Reversal Hope, Dr. Susanna Bazzoni, she's got such a great personality. She is so incredibly funny, so incredibly talented, and she does these great voices, uh, impersonations. She she's a uh, she's a lot of fun. So I'm sure we'll we'll probably have there's a there's a few outtakes of her for sure. Oh, wow. Are there any uh, movers and shakers in the plant-based world, either doctors or just people you know, that haven't so far been featured in your documentaries that you hope someday to work with? You know, we're finding we're finding new people all of the time. Uh, and there's a couple of physicians that are actually in Florida that I spoke to about disease reversal hope. And, it, and we just caught them on the very end and schedules didn't work out because we would have liked to have included them. But I do believe they'll be making an appearance in the next one. Well, so we'll be excited to introduce them to the world. Your work just sounds so fun to me. I just, I love that, you know, because it just, it, I, you know, that's what people need, people need to see it. And some people won't read a book, so. Exactly. Well, and, you know, it's like, I'm sure you enjoy what you do and you're great at it. And that's a lot of fun, too, meeting all these different people and talking to these different people. And, and we're very blessed to be able to do what we love to do. And that's production. And then to be able to combine that with a passion for helping people and putting information out there that's inspiring and uplifting and improves people's lives. That's that's just sort of the epitome of the best job ever. Yeah, well, that'd be great. Wouldn't it be great if one of the plant-based films like was nominated for an Oscar Best Documentary? Absolutely. That would be absolutely phenomenal. Sure I don't know. Was. There's a whole lot of politics in there, so I don't know. <laughs> well, speaking of politics, David wants to know, have you ever worked with the mayor of New York, Eric Adams? You know, actually, yes, his story, of, his story appears in PlantWise. So anybody who looks at PlantWise will see his story there in PlantWise. We were um, we were able to capture his story and interview him there in New York uh, before he became the mayor. Um, and so his story, I know, has been very inspirational to a lot of people. Is that your documentary as well? Yes, it is. I it did is. not know about that one. So where can I watch it? That one is available. I think if you just go to go do a Google search on PlantWise or whatever, it'll probably take you to the link where you can watch because it's available to watch for free. How the heck did I miss that one? Yeah, or maybe I, maybe I saw it and I just don't remember, but that's, that's great. That maybe. I think it came out last year. So oh, that, Yes, I did a show about that. I did. Yeah. I, you do a show every day sometimes. I know. Show. You see I so much stuff. See that. I did see that. Well, you are yeah. just delightful. Thank you so much for the work you do to, you know, to really, you're, you're, you're shedding the spotlight on something so important. Well, thank you. I, I, we, we certainly hope so. And we surely appreciate the, the support from everyone who's out in the plant-based world helping to spread the message. We really appreciate you for all you do and for giving us an opportunity to talk about this as well. My pleasure. And so if there's any updates, I can update the show notes. And if you want people to follow you on social media, where can they go to get updates about the film or whatever else you're doing? Yes, absolutely. So uh, updates about the upcoming film, Disease Reversal Hope. You can go to diseasereversalhope.org. And then all of the social media links are up there on that website. And so those will be forthcoming, the details as we get them. Um, and with everything else, um, with regards to what we do, Eating You Alive is still the place to go and kind of see what we're doing there on Eating You Alive. Uh, eatingyoualive.org if anybody wants to support through financial means uh, and donate to projects to help us keep these projects coming. That is extremely appreciated and, and we're very grateful. Right. Well, somebody, I, they heard plant lies instead of plant wise. <laughs> 
Why not wise? Yes. <laughs> wise is in wisdom. That's a whole other movie plan. Okay. That's, a, that's a conspiracy Absolutely. movie. Right. Um, D- David mentions, what about states that are allocating millions of dollars for plant-based meals in school? California, Illinois, and New York. I was not aware of that. Yeah, I actually, um, other than Mayor Adams, uh, you know, launching some initiatives in the New York area to do some of these things, I wasn't actually aware of some of the other states that were doing this. Wow. Oh, good. At least somebody's doing something. So thank yeah, you. again, I think there's just really a shift all over. If we're seeing it in schools, we're seeing it in hospitals, you know, I think hopefully that there'll be a, as more and more people jump on the bandwagon, we'll see more healthy foods available, you know, access will be greater. And, you know, we'll just kind of turn this thing around our health crisis, turn it around. Wow. And instead of jumping on the bandwagon, we'll have them jump on the plant wagon. <laughs> yeah, that's much better. <laughs> All right. Well, it's so great catching up with you. I know that we had to reschedule because you're always on the road, but I'm glad you were able to find a place where you were able to talk to me today. Oh, well, thank you, AJ, again, for the opportunity. It's always great to see you, and we look forward to catching up with you soon. I hope so. Thank you, Marilee. And thanks, all of you, for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back at 2 p.m. for a culinary demonstration from Thomas Allen from California Balsamics. And tomorrow, my show is a little bit later at 12.30 p.m. because Dr. Andrew Freeman is doing a PowerPoint presentation after he's done with his clinic. 